Today I'm going to be talking about my personal top 15 modules for Pathfinder 2E for Foundry VTT. These modules are right here and you can just copy this list and leave, but I recommend you watch this video to see what these modules actually do. There's definitely going to be more modules than the ones I've listed here, but these are my top picks. Let me know in the comments below if you recommend any other modules, specifically PF2E modules. And if you don't want to watch this entire video, at least look at the top seven because they're important. Anyway, remember to like and subscribe if you like this sort of content. Let's start with module 15, a really cute module that I enjoy. PF2E Effects Halo is a very small module that adds a little bit of quality of life that just make things look more pleasant. Let me show you what it does. PF2E Effects Halo is very simple. Right now we have a bunch of effects on Ezran and they look sort of like this. Let me go ahead and enable the module and look. Now the effects sort of look like this. Pretty cool, huh? That's it. That's literally the module. I think it's indispensable though, so just get it. Let's move on to module 14. This one's a small quality of life module that actually makes a really big difference. I've talked about this one before, but I'll show you again. PF2E control click effects allows you to, instead of dragging and dropping the second condition to Ezrin, you can literally just control click it on him and add it on him from the side here. And you can do this on multiple people too. So if you want to give them all unconscious, you can just control click that and bam, everybody's dead. Very simple plug and play module. It looks like it's not verified for version 13 or whatever, but it definitely works. So grab it. All right, let's move on to module number 13. This is a minor quality of life module that should be only used by the GM, not the players, unless your players really want to know their chances. Let me show you what it's all about. Let's say the rat decides to attack Ezran here and we're just going to make a jaw strike. If you see right here it tells you the chances of them succeeding or failing that's effectively the module it's kind of useful to know sometimes what chances you have or the enemy has but i don't recommend players see this because it's sort of metagamey but also i had a player complain once that he had a 55 percent chance to quit an enemy and he kept missing so it is demoralizing if that does happen so just a heads up on that there's some settings here i recommend just changing this to gm only and there's some other settings you can mess with this if you wish i really like the chances module though it does give me a sort of vibe better than just you know numbers i've also talked about this module before but i can't live without it now it's called pf2 creature sounds and i adore this thing if you want to see some more examples of this module i recommend you click on this video here that shows you it's an exact video on this entire module but i'm going to show you a brief highlight right now as a zombie for example attacks valeros yeah. <laughs> It makes some really cool noises. Same with when it gets hurt. Also when they die and every creature has a cool noise. Let me show you some examples. You can select any sort of creature here from the list that usually auto populates. So if you do get a cat creature, it'll automatically make it into a cat noise and it makes its own noises for each creature. Check the other video for more information. Let's move on to module number 11. PF2E Extempore Effects allows you to put an effect on a token even if it's not an actual effect. Let me just show you how this works. PF2E Extempore Effects allows you to add a custom effect on a token when there is no such effect. For example, if the hunting spider applies hunting spider venom on Valeros, you can right click on it, select Valeros and click on Extempore Effect and you see a little bit of a status here he's got the poison on stage one it'll automatically increase in stages when you click on this thing you can also use it on spells for example if i want to know that ezrin has the tech magic up at all times i can extempore effect the icon on top of him works for a lot of things that don't have effects just right click extempore effect and bam you're gonna remember they have it Let's move on to module number 10. PF3 modifiers matter is great for highlighting those points in time where those plus ones made a difference. As Kyra casts Bless on herself and Vigloros attacks this spider, as he hits by plus zero, the Bless that adds the plus one that allowed him to hit 
is currently highlighted right here. This is really cool when you have like a bard playing Courageous Anthem and it hits just because of that Courageous Anthem or a bunch of modifiers like Off Guard and, and Sickened and whatever. It all shows up to make that difference and it's highlighted by this module. Highly recommend it if you wanna like short, sort of tell your players or explain to your players that those plus ones really do matter. And just as a side GM tip as part of this, I do recommend you highlight and make sure that your supports are indeed making a difference. So let's move on to module number nine. This one's a pretty crucial one. It's just a quality of life module and it just works in the background for you, but check it out. Let me show you how it works right now. I'm giving Valeros a bracelet of dashing and as I put him in his inventory, it's gonna actually show up here in the actions tab. That way he doesn't forget he has it. That's it, super simple, super useful and quality of life. Let's move on to the next module. I also kind of like this module. It shows you which stats on an NPC are better than others based on their level. Let me show you what this means. I have a giant rat here, and if I click on mark stats, it's gonna give me the bad ones in red, so the rat has bad charisma, so it's a minus three and it's red. For a level one, minus one creature, it's stealth plus five is pretty good on green. And as you can see, the top color here is blue. So if I put the AC to 60 for some reason, for this rat, it's gonna be highlighted blue and etc. Personally, this module is good to know when creatures have overpowered stats based on one thing or another. It doesn't help me that much in GMing, being perfectly honest, but I think it's cool to see colors in the character sheet. Pretty colors. Anyway, let's move on to module number seven. These seven are going to be important, so pay attention. The biggest thing I use PF2 dailies for is to prepare staves, but it's also great for animists and familiars and a bunch of other stuff. You're going to have to check this one out. All right, firstly, let's just give Ezrin a staff of fire here, because why not? Congratulations, Ezrin, you now have a staff. Well, that's a lame one. Let's give him a greater staff of fire. Why not? He's got two staffs to pick from. So now when you rest for the night and hit this little daily preparations button, you can prepare a staff of fire. You can even expend a spell slot. Now we go to activations and we'll see the staff of fire set up here for him. Amazing. There's a bunch of stuff you can prepare that's basically quality of life for all your players, including feats, certain feats, spells, scrolls, everything, mainly familiars as well. Oh, and animists, absolutely crucial for animists. This is a major quality of life module for certain things that you will not be able to live without. Highly recommend PF2E dailies. I haven't shown you the full extent of this module, but I also don't want to make this video too long. So let's move on to the next module. PF2E Companion Compendia is indispensable, essential, and you cannot live without it if you're going to be using any sort of animal companion or Eidolon. It's a quick plug and play. Let me show you how this works. This one's pretty simple. Let's say Valeros gets the Beastmaster archetype and wants to grab a friend. We're going to make a new actor here called Animal Companion, Luffy. Make him as a player character. And then from Companion Compendia, you have the ancestries to grab from here. So I'm going to say Fluffy's a badger. Excellent. And it auto populates the class and the ancestry. You can see his attacks here on his character sheet. Also works for Eidolons. If you want to make an Eidolon, just rename this to Eidolon. Fluffy as well. We can make a beast Eidolon here. So the primary weapon, and there you go. When they level up, you can select Nimble or Savage Companion, whatever it is, and it's got all the automation in it to make animal companions and Eidolons and a little extra, but that's the module. Let's move on to the next module. PF2E Assistance is a quality of life automation module that does certain things for you so you don't have to click a bunch of buttons. Let me show you how this works real quick. The long and short of it is, let's say Valeros wants to trip this spider. I'll open up basic action macros, which is from the workbench Mac module. I'll talk about this later. But let's just go ahead and trip him. Do you see it added prone automatically as he succeeded? It's pretty lightweight and it really helps me out when GMing. Bunch of stuff that it automates, including demoralize and grapple. I do recommend you watch this video here explaining the module and see how it works in thorough detail. But for now, 
this is as much as I'm gonna show you in this video. Let's move on to module number four on this list. PF2 utility buttons is a module I literally cannot live without and I recommend you get this just for a couple of things it does. Let me show you how it works right now. Let's assume this spider is hidden as Valeros attacks it. Because he's hidden, he needs to roll a DC 11 flat check as per the Pathfinder 2E rules. So that's his little button here automatically. Oh, he missed on a crit, which happens more often than you think. Also automates blindness. Same deal. Flat check. Still a miss. It'll also do stupefied. I cast electric arc on it. Because I'm stupefied, I need to roll the flat check. Look, he just succeeded. Also gives a little delay button in your initiative. You can decide to delay whenever you wish. And the players can also click this button as well. It does a couple of other things and there are some settings you can mess with, but that's the gist of this module. Super quality of life and super useful. Let's go on to the next module. I've talked about this module extensively in another video. I'm gonna link it up above if you wanna click on it for the full details. But for now, I'm just gonna show you the gist of what it does. This module's pretty extensive. Let me show you the few things it has quickly and then you can check out the other video if you're interested in learning more. The first thing it does is adds a little bit of a tool tip on player characters, although I personally don't like this, and turn it off. The second thing it does is if you hover over a player character and hover over an enemy, it'll give you the distance between them and it also has a health estimate, which is the same as a health estimate module, perfectly fine which means that this creature is at full health. And if you damage it, it says seeing better days. It also calculates vertical distance for you. So for example, if this rat's 50 feet on the ceiling and a few feet away, it'll give you the exact distance from where it is at the very top there, which is super useful for diagonals. The biggest thing I use it for, you can change the setting to auto-populated, but it basically shows the character sheet at the very bottom. And since rats only have a jaws attack, it'll attack with the jaws. You can click here and just attack super easily. If we go to another more complicated creature, just select it, a skeleton guard, for example, it'll show every single attack and everything it has. Also any skill actions it might be able to use, including, well, I guess skeletons can't do a lot. I guess it'll roll in acrobatics here. This module has a lot of things that I cover in the other video. Make sure you check that out. Although version 13 might be slightly different from that video, it might be slightly outdated. Let me show you a couple more things and then we'll move on to the next module. A couple more things, including a time tracker at the top here where you can change time easily enough. A dice tray at the bottom where you can just click on the dice and roll it. Super simple, super easy. You can also disable certain things in the settings. You can disable each individual thing. If you don't like a thing, so check it out. I really like PF2E HUD. It saves a lot of time as a GM, and you can always ask your players to use it as well. They might like it. It's a pretty UI, so give it a shot. All right, let's move on to the next module, PF2E Tool Belt. Tool Belt's indispensable and has so many options that I'm not going to cover them here. I'm just going to give you a gist of it and then point you and direct you to the other video where I cover most of Tool Belt's utility. I made a full extensive video on Tool Belt for version 12. Some of the options haven't carried over to version 13, but check the video out here. Uh, this is a really important module. I highly recommend you get this one, if not any other module, because this is a really, really good one. Let's cover some bits of it for version 13, just so you don't, you know, get left hanging. So let's go and do that. The way I'm gonna show you this module is just by going to settings and show you what it can do. Honestly, there is so much stuff here that, well, I already made a video on it, so watch that. But genuinely, this is so much quality of life that I could not not be able to live without it. Look, there's a reason it's number two on this list and I'm probably not selling it to you right now by not showing you what it does. But again, check the other video because I already did all that. So moving on to module number one, Workbench. This one has a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, I'll show you a bit of a glimpse of it. I don't have a video on this one actually because it's so extensive, but I'm gonna show you some things it can do. Workbench adds options from NPC mystification settings, which you can mystify NPCs or even items or whatever it is. Uh, reminder settings, which reminds people to target when there is an attack, for example, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, including a hero point handler, which is cool because it pops up with a dialogue reminding you to give out hero points. There's a world quality of life setting 
that allows you to scale NPCs. There's a video on that. It doesn't look like it works on 13 yet for the most part. Uh, and then there's, again, minor quality of life things, world automation settings, including adding wounded and adding dying to people. Uh, also, client automation settings, which auto rolls damages when you attack, auto rolls spell attack damages, a lot of stuff here. House rules, including variant point hero rules, answers to Paragon. We'll also say the biggest use for Workbench for me is the macros as well. If you go to Workbench and find some macros, there's a lot of macros here that are just made by the community, super useful, uh, especially uh, basic action macros. This one I have on the bottom here, you can just, and honestly, I have a whole video on the macros you need. It's an older video, but it definitely checks out and it's a really good video. Workbench is indispensable. I've covered very briefly what it does, but I do recommend you try it out. Wouldn't be able to run Pathfinder 2 without it. It's that indispensable. So there you go. Hey, those were my top 15 PF2E modules. I hope you enjoyed this video and it proved useful to you. Remember to like and subscribe and I guess watch this video on the right because it shows something YouTube thinks you'll like. Also, honorary mention if you stuck till the end, PF2E range combat is a great module that I didn't mention, but I think it's indispensable for range combat. I just forgot about it. I'm near the end of this video though, so I'm not gonna go over it, but if you need a crossbow thing, check that out. Anyway, like and subscribe, bye.